good people. Welcome back to BKC Cooks. I'm Brandon Carpenter today. I'm working on a jerk chicken pizza. I'm making that on my Char Griller Gravity 980 grill. So why make pizza? Um, I moved here to the Austin area about three, three and a half years ago. And I was not able to find any pizza that I liked. Now, for y'all, get on my case. Um, I'm not bashing any pizza joints. Um, pizza is a very regional thing. Uh, you like the pizza that you grew up with. Uh, and I'm from the Chicagoland area. And just so you know, we don't eat deep dish. That's a very rare thing. That's for tourists. Um, in my area, we grew up on thin crust tavern style pizza. And um, I haven't been able to find that here. I found one or two good pizzas that I would, you know, drive for here in the Austin area, but overall, it's just not for me. So I can't keep making trips back and forth to uh, Chicago every time I want good pizza, so I have to start making it here. So I've done some experimenting, I've made a bunch of pizzas, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Uh, again, I am using my Char Grilla Gravity 980, and I'm using a pizza stone, and it works phenomenally as a pizza oven. The temperatures are very consistent, the stone does a great job of crisping up that crust. And um, I wanted to do something different. And so I had some uh, chicken that I needed to cook. I'm like, okay, chicken on the pizza. And you know, barbecue pizza is cool, but jerk chicken. Jerk chicken is so much better. Again, if you like it spicy, this is the pizza for you. So we're gonna go through all the steps like we always do. So let's get all this stuff together. We're gonna start with the dough because you gotta do your dough first. Let's get everything together and make it happen. Let's go. All right, so let's get started on the dough. You know, the crust is the base. And without a good base, like in anything else, it's gonna collapse. So uh, what I'm doing is pretty simple. I'm starting off with one pack of yeast. I've got uh, two cups of high gluten flour. So when I say high gluten, uh, you want this to be at least 11% gluten, 11 to 13 is about what I like. Uh, that's gonna give you a really nice chew and it'll crisp up really nicely. Also got a quarter cup of good olive oil. Have a tablespoon of just plain old sugar. A teaspoon of salt. Uh, and two thirds of a cup of warm water. So you want this around 100 degrees, you can get this right out of the tap. You don't want it hot, because hot will kill your yeast. You just want it warm so that the yeast will bloom. And um, I'm gonna do something a little crazy here. Uh, I'm actually gonna be making my dough in my food processor. Uh, and there's a story behind this. The reason I started doing this was because when I made my move from Indiana to Texas, somehow or another, my dough hook for my stand mixer disappeared. I have no idea where it is. And uh, I just never took the time to search out and, and find a replacement. Uh, but Again, not being able to find a pizza that I would go out of my way for here. Uh, I really started craving pizza in a really bad way. And so I uh, decided to give my food processor a chance because it has a, a dough blade attachment, whatever you want to call it. And it has a dough button on there. And so it's programmed to uh, operate at the correct speed and whatever other logic it uses. So we're going to get this going in our food processor. So we're gonna start off blooming the yeast. Uh, we're gonna get warm water in the bowl with yeast and the sugar. We're gonna give that a little stir and let it do its thing. So let's get going on that. Okay, so I already have my package of uh, the instant dry yeast in the bowl. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of just plain white sugar. This will feed the yeast. Give it something to eat as it's waking up. I have two thirds of a cup of, again, this is warm water, not hot. You read the uh, instructions on the yeast package, it'll give you a better idea of temperature that your water should be at. So I'm gonna let this sit for a minimum of five minutes. Uh, you should be able to see this stuff reacting. You'll see movement, you'll see bubbling, you'll see just a, a huge change in appearance. If you don't, just stop. Uh, 
toss it and start over. Sometimes you do get dead yeast. Um, this instance, it's already, already smelling really good and yeasty and I'm, I'm pretty confident this is gonna bloom just fine. But in the case you come back five minutes later and nothing's changed, nothing's moving, you don't see a dramatic difference, just toss it and start over. Okay, so it's been about eight minutes as you can see. This is completely different than what we started. It's nice and foamy. It's doubled or tripled in volume. My yeast is doing well, so now we'll get everything else in. So I'm gonna go in with my quarter cup of oil. And I need a teaspoon of salt. And the last thing we'll add is our flour. I'm gonna show you how I measure the flour though. Uh, there is a way to do it, a proper way, uh, when you're making bread or baking or doing anything, especially when you're dealing with yeast. So let's take a look. Okay, so when you're measuring this out, you don't wanna just uh, scoop your measuring cup into the flour, because that will compact it. So what I do is I get a spoon, or if you have a scoop or something like that, you wanna scoop this in and you do your best not to compact it or smash it at all. And I, I go over what I need. And you just come behind with a flat edge like a butter knife or pastry scraper or something. And you scoop that right off. And that's your one cup of flour. Again, don't dig and scoop. You'll compact it down and your dough will be too heavy. Okay, so before we add the flour, we're gonna get our dough blade in there. Second cup of flour. Get our lid on. Power on. Got that locked down. And here comes the easy part. All right, our dough is all kneaded up. Let's take a look here. So this is what we're looking at. You can see it is holding on. Nice stretch. Good dough structure. I'm just gonna get all this dough off of this uh, beater, blade, or whatever you wanna call it. Now, if you find that your dough is like really sticky, you can knead a little bit of flour into it just so it's easier to handle. You don't want your dough to be dry. Um, you don't want it to be lifeless. So I'm scooping all this out, or at least it's, you know, within reason. I'm gonna spend all day getting every bit out of there. You'll never get it all. But the big chunks that you can get, leave no dough behind. So this is what I got. I'm gonna form this into a ball. And I'm gonna put it in a nice big bowl. I'm gonna oil this bowl up with just a tad bit of oil. I mean, just a couple of drops. And you just wipe around on the inside. You just want it so that this won't stick. So as I form this into a ball, I'm gonna get this in there. And I'm gonna put a lid on it. You can just use a towel, plastic wrap, whatever you got. You want to cover it and you want to let this double in size um, so you try to put it someplace warm it's about 85 degrees here today so uh, I won't have a problem getting this to rise but when you get your dough ball in there um, roll it around a bit in that oil that'll help it uh, not stick to your bowl so once you get this in a bowl Again, just get that oil mixed around in there. I got my dough ball. I'm just gonna roll it around a bit. And as you can see, it's nice and shiny from the oil. 
And when I'm making it, I, I kind of fold this under. And you'll see that it's gonna start coming together, be real smooth and sleek. And it'll look like a pizza dough ball that you've seen in the past. You know, a minute ago, you were looking at me like, what the hell is going on with that dough? But look at it now. Beautiful. So, you know, what this is showing you is this needs to rest. Now, you don't have to do this overnight. Uh, a lot of doughs, a lot of pizza doughs and stuff that you see, uh, they want you to rise it, double rise it, ferment it overnight. If you were looking for more of a bread type crust, uh, those types of doughs are what you're going to want to ferment overnight or for uh, many hours. What I'm making is more of a cracker style crust. It's not going to be thick at all. It's not going to be chewy. It's going to be crispy uh, with just a bit of chew. So we don't have to uh, ferment this or uh, give it that long of a rise. Basically, once it doubles in size, I'm going to punch it down roll it back into another ball. I'll let it rest for uh, at least another hour or until I'm ready to get my pizzas made. So you can do this overnight, you can do it ahead of time, or you can do it like me a few hours ahead of when you're gonna make your pizza. So uh, lid on and we'll come back when this is doubled in size and we'll punch it down. All right, so while our dough is rising and fermenting, let's work on the sauce. Uh, sauce is super easy, y'all. Uh, just gonna start off with one can of crushed tomatoes. I got these from, you guessed it, H-E-B, greatest grocery store in the world. Again, they don't pay me to say that, but H-E-B, if you want to, I'm your man. Can you dig it? So, we're gonna do two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Gonna do a teaspoon of granulated gar garlic powder, a teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of salt, and just a pinch of crushed red pepper. If you want it spicier, you can always add more. Uh, again, y'all, this is super simple. I'm not cooking my sauce. You just open this can, put all those spices in there, stir them around, stick them in the fridge until you're ready to make your pizza. Can't get more simple than that. You can always add different spices, different herbs if you want to. This is my base sauce, and I think it works really well. All right, so the dough is still rising. It's time to make the jerk chicken. Um, what I have is two boneless, skinless chicken thighs, and I used a heaping tablespoon of jerk marinade. Uh, the brand I'm using is called Walker's Wood. It is from Jamaica. It's fantastic. I've been using it for years. I highly recommend it. So I'm gonna get my grill up to a pretty high temperature, probably about 600 degrees, 650 probably, somewhere around there. Uh, I'm gonna grill these off, get them totally cooked, I'll pull them off and let them cool. That way I can chop them up and get them ready to put on the pizza. After I do that, uh, I'm gonna get my pizza stone on the grill. I'll get that at 475. I'm gonna heat it up for an hour. You definitely wanna preheat your stone, uh, I say for at least an hour, uh, if you can. Uh, even if you're doing this in the oven, you can do it the same way in the oven. You don't have to do this on the grill, but you wanna heat up that stone because it takes a while to get it to the ambient temperature that you're looking for. So we're gonna get this chicken cooked up, then we'll get our stone on the grill, get it heated up, and before you know it, we'll be making pizza. All right, so I got my grill up to temp. I just put my chicken on there. We're gonna get these uh, grilled up and cooked all the way through. And uh, after that, we'll get our stone on there and we'll be making pizza. All right, so our chicken should be ready. And the meat it is ready. So I'm gonna pull this off, but in the meantime, let's get our pizza stone. I already turned my temperature down to 475. So I'm going to let this stone heat up for uh, 45 minutes to an hour, but probably an hour. And then uh, we'll get our pizzas on there. Get that chicken off. Ooh, ooh. 
All right, let's take a look at this dough. All right, as you can see, it has more than doubled in size. Yeast is doing its thing. We're gonna do what they call punching it down. Basically, we're just popping a big bubble. And as you can see, it's quickly deflating. spongy dough. Forgive my camera work here. Nice spongy dough. So what I'm going to do is put this back into a ball like we originally did. I'm going to let it rest and uh, in about an hour we'll be rolling out dough. So what you can do with this, you can make one uh, medium thick, uh, you know, sheet of dough for your pizza or you can get two really thin crust pizzas out of this i'm gonna do two thin ones so uh i'm gonna again put that back into a ball let it rest and when i get ready to roll this out i'll actually cut it in half put one to the side and roll them out one by one all right our stone is heating up it's time to roll out this pizza so again i told you i'm gonna make two out of this so i punched that down but as you can see it rolls again Let's us know we did everything right. That yeast is happy, healthy, and doing its job. So I'm gonna cut this in half. I'm gonna uh, flour up my counter. I'm gonna start with a nice, clean surface counter or whatever you're gonna roll your dough out on. So uh, I'm gonna flour it, get this rolled out, and start putting the toppings on. Uh, I have a list of all the ingredients in the description. Uh, because this video will take forever if I go through everything. I'll show you what I'm using, I'll tell you what I'm using. If you want amounts and all that stuff, the description is where you need to be. So let's get this dough rolled out, get it on a pan, and get it on that stone. Let's go. All right, so we're gonna start by getting some flour down on our counter here. dough so it's easy to work with and not too sticky so again I'm making two with this so I'm gonna use my pizza cutter I'm just gonna cut this right in half All right. I'll take it and make it as much into a ball as I can so we got two dough balls. I'm gonna kick one off to the side. And I'm gonna get going on this one. So a little more flour. This flour bucket out of the way. A little flour on my pan. I'm gonna smash this out by hand first. best you can to keep a round shape. This takes some practice. So again, I'm going with thin. Might be easier to start off with a thicker one because it's easier to work with. And again, you're not gonna get it perfectly round. If you do, hats off to you. got a 16 inch pizza pan here and as you can see it's a little bigger and that's actually perfect because when I start maneuvering this dough onto the pan that dough is going to tend to want to shrink up a bit so you want to get it a little bigger than what your pan is so that by the time you're done maneuvering and manipulating it won't be too small so when it comes to the pan 
I'm gonna put just a little bit of cornmeal. And cornmeal is gonna help it slide on and off because I don't have a pizza peel, believe it or not. Now I have a brother, an older brother. He's a pretty good pizza maker. He's really fancy. So he has a pizza peel and pizza oven and everything. He's rich and successful though, but that's a, a whole other story. So again, a little bit of cornmeal. This just acts like little mini, little mini ball bearings. And this will help it slide off. Not gonna do much for taste or texture or anything. Again, it's just to help us get the dough on and off. So we'll clear up our area here. You wanna be gentle with this dough. We'll get it spread out. All right, we've got our dough spread out. Now it's time to put this thing together. So I've got a nice ladle of sauce here. And spread this all the way out to the edge. I'm gonna try to get it out of the middle as much as possible. jerk flavor all those spices and seasonings and again marinating it overnight just let it really go all the way through the meat and I believe this is gonna be fantastic I've got shredded mozzarella here I like to get the edges first So our stone is nice and hot. So my stone has a little bumper in the back, so that'll help you uh, keep it from sliding off. I like that feature. So we're gonna get this thing on here. I'll try to. The camera's giving me trouble, but it won't stop us. As you can see, this is a complete failure. <laughs> I had a, a section that did not want to slide. But I'm gonna do my best to straighten it out. See how that turns out um, I'm not editing anything I don't believe in uh, showing perfection what I did didn't work so great and that's part of cooking 
but I think we're going to be able to salvage it and still have a fantastic pizza. So uh, we'll check on this in about eh, five minutes, see what it looks like. Um, it's going to be ugly, but it's still going to be delicious, and that's what matters. So let's check on it in five minutes. All right, it's been five minutes. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah, it's coming along. A couple more minutes, we'll be done. All right, let's give it a look. I think it's about done. Oh, yeah. We're ready. We are ready. Yeah, not the prettiest, and that's all my fault, but... um. This is going to be delicious. Let's get it off of here and get it cut up. All right, so it's time for the taste test, y'all. Wasn't my best effort getting that pizza on that stone, but uh, it cooked up perfectly. I put some scallions on there, because you know, scallions and jerk go hand in hand. And uh, we're gonna give her a try and see what she does. Mm, feel hot. Ooh. I don't really know what to say, man. That jerk flavor is coming through. Those scallions are fresh and crisp and bright, and those onions on there. The mushrooms are great. Good cheese pull. Crispy crust. Yes, sir. That turned out great. Really good. My son is lurking. You know, he makes an appearance on here from time to time. He's over there lurking. He and I are the only ones that eat jerk in the house. Nobody else can handle that level of heat. You wanna come try it? You gotta give an honest reaction on camera. You gotta be quick. Yeah, he already shaking his head. That's pretty good. You like that jerk on there? Of course. Ten out of ten. Ten, ten out of ten. You heard it from him. Y'all, that's it for this one. Y'all forgive me, I still can't get used to speaking with food in my mouth. Forgive me, mama. <laughs> well, we thank y'all for watching. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. And as always, help me out. Leave your questions, your comments, smash that bell, smash that subscribe button. That way when new content comes out, you'll be the first to know. So again, we thank y'all for watching and we wish good eating to y'all. Take care and enjoy some jerk chicken pizza. It's really good.